Program. The Pet Milk Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Evaporated milk, pet milk, presents Silver McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Peter Leeds, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Keith Fowler and directed by Max Hutto with music by the King's Band and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> Every mother wants the best for her baby. And when it's a question of the kind of milk to buy for your baby, this you can count on. There is no better milk than pet evaporated milk. Safe, yes, pet milk sterilized in a sealed can is as safe as if there were no germ of disease in all the world. Easy to digest? Why, no milk you can buy is easier for a baby to digest than pet milk. No milk is more uniformly rich. No milk provides a better balance of essential milk minerals and vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. And it's that combination, remember, that enables your baby to build sound teeth and strong, straight bones, and to make sturdy, steady growth. And here's something else worth remembering. Pet evaporated milk, so good for babies, costs less generally than ordinary bottled milk or any other form of milk. Now, knowing all these facts, you can easily understand why pet milk, the first evaporated milk, is the first food for millions of happy, sturdy babies. <laughs> days of Walt Disney, we've become used to mice and pigs and cats who talk to each other. So it shouldn't be too surprising to hear an elk talking to his wife in the home of Fibber McGee and Molly. Enough elks are in bad trouble, Molly. Our club is already mortgaged right up to the pigeons that roost on the roof. And a big payment is due next week? That's right. The second payment on the third installment of the fourth mortgage. <laughs> we ain't got the money. So a committee is meeting today to figure out how to raise it. Well, uh, how does it happen that you're not on the committee, dearie? Well, they called the meeting too early in the day for me. And besides, it looks like rain. And anyhow, I got other irons in the fire. And also, I wasn't asked. <laughs> Well, that last reason stands up pretty well. Well, I think Latrivi and Doc Gamble and the other guys on the committee were... Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Molly. McGee. Hi, Latrivia. Is the committee already through meeting? Yes, McGee, and we hit upon a splendid plan to raise the money. Yeah? An exhibition of championship pool. Well. You mean, uh, pool? Like on a pool table with pool balls and a pool cue? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. I thought I summed it up rather well in the one word, pool. <laughs> uh, admission will be charged, of course. Well, uh, who'll give this exhibition, Mr. Mayor? The champion of our club will meet the Elks Club champion from the city of Slow Rapids. <laughs> A winner take all. Oh, they've agreed to have their man here in time for the match tonight. Tonight, huh? Well, I don't know who you picked to represent us Elks, but whoever it is, I guarantee I could take them like cough drops. You, McGee? You betcha. They don't realize down at that Elks Club, but I'm the best dad ratted pool player that ever hung a hip over the corner pocket. <laughs> you know, that's odd. Ollie told me that he never runs short of kindling wood at the Elks because you break so many cues. <laughs> well, the best of us have a little accident now and then. I've been a great player ever since I was a kid in school. I ever tell you the trivia about the time I played pool with Paul Powell at the Peoria Pool Hall? <laughs> uh, no. No, and if it's all the same thing, Well, this I... Paul Powell was a shark. <laughs> One day at the pool hall, I stepped up to Paul, and I said, How about some pool, Paul? And he said, Don't be a pool, pal. I'm Paul Powell, and any silly soul who plays pool with Paul Powell is in for a fall, pal. <laughs> I, I said, boy. Maybe I'm a fool who can't fill the bill, but I feel I won't fail, and if you won't play pool, you're pulling a stall, pal. So he gave me a scowl and racked up the balls, and me and Paul Powell began to play pool. Oh, you began the hall was still when he busted the balls with the strength of a bull, but the one ball didn't fall, and Paul Powell tried the L foul. He did. I pal. said, That was no foul, Paul, so don't try to ball foul. Just give me the cue, pal, and I'll maul the cue ball, even though I'm smaller than you, Paul. <laughs> Well, Powell got pale like he wanted to kill, but I kept cool and pulled the fill, and then it fell. 
Then I sunk the two ball, and the crowd in the hall all started to call the kid ain't tall, but he's better than you, Paul. And I sunk the three ball, and I said, you see, Paul, I ain't a fool at all, pal. Then I sunk the four ball, and I said, there's more, Paul, so don't ball, pal, while I pile up the score with a smile, pal. <laughs> Smiling, yes. When every ball fell, the crowd gave a yell. <laughs> and Paul Powell let out a howl and threw in a towel, and they still tell at the hall how my style and skill had more appeal than the pool played by Paul Powell. <laughs> I've never met Mr. Powell, but I feel that I've spent most of my life with him. <laughs> well, no matter how great I am, and I admit it, you guys will probably ignore the real expert and pick some fumble thumb drum dum that thinks a Q is a Chinese haircut. <laughs> you already chose the guy to play for us? Yes, we have. Who is it? You. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Yes, yes, everyone agrees you're the logical man, McGee. Oh, I'd be, yeah, but, 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 you do, but, but. Uh... <laughs> We're counting on you, McGee. Yeah. The mortgage payment is at stake. I'll see you later. My gosh. Me. In a championship pool match. You sound upset, dearie. Wasn't that what you wanted? Well, sure, but it's awful short notice. And... Oh, hey, I just remembered I can't play pool tonight. Uh, we, we got a date with Hector Howell and his wife to play Canatcher. <laughs> no, no, that's tomorrow night. Oh, I'll be so proud of you, dearie. You'll show them, won't you? Oh, sure, I will. Oh, hey, I just remembered. I can't make it. <laughs> That's too bad. What now? I promised to stay home tonight and help you put up some apple butter. That was last night. Oh. <laughs> Doggone it, there must be something I can... Come in. Hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Oh, hi, Oldtimer. Hello there, daughter. Hi, Johnny. How you doing, kid? Oh. Well, McGee's just been given a great honor, Mr. Oldtimer. He's going to represent the Elks tonight in a big pool match. Is that so? Yeah. Well, I'll leave the cheering section for you, Johnny. I used to be a cheerleader when I went to school. A cheerleader, eh? Only one the school had. Yeah? Back in them days, there wasn't no pom-pom girls and drum majorettes and short skirts. In fact, in them days, if a fella seen an ankle, he'd rush home, lock yourself in his room, and write three pages in his diary. <laughs> You like the cheerleader by the school? Yep. Ate up some dandy cheers, too. Uh, like the football cheer, which went, Razzmatazz and hey to hey. We'll stop at nothing on this day. Oh, that was a fine one. Uh, made sense, too. The other teams got plenty of points, but we always stopped at nothing. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. You must have been quite a cheerleader, Mr. Oldtimer. Yep, don't worry, but... Uh, uh, wound up in disgrace. Oh. I asked the girls to support our team, and they thought I said something indelicate. <laughs> when you asked them to support the team? Yep. Our colors was pink and blue. Yeah. When the team came out in the field, I yelled, Here they are, girls. Now show them your pink and blue supporters. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra and Domino.
great night for the McGee. Yeah. I'll be watching my clever husband wallop the daylights out of the pool champion from Slow Rapids. Yeah. Well, don't sound so downcast, dearie. You will beat him, won't you? Oh, sure, sure. He ain't got a chance if, if I'm at my best, but that's the trouble. I, I'm starting not to feel so good. And I got a pain. What kind of a pain? Well, it's sort of like an ache. What sort of an ache? Oh, well, it's kind of like a pain. It's a pity you didn't study medicine, McGee. You'd have made a fine diagnostician. <laughs> so help me, kiddo. It, it come on to me all to a sudden. It's a, it's a feeling I just can't describe. Right where my appendix is. You mean where it was? <laughs> you had your appendix out 20 years ago, sweetheart. Oh, yeah. Well, that makes it easier to describe. It's a, it's a sort of a lonesome feeling. <laughs> Sweetheart, I'm beginning to... Come in. Hello, Dr. Gamble. Hello, Molly. And a brisk bow to you, Brother Elk. We're all counting on you tonight, my boy. Well, look, I got a kind of a problem, Doc. It's true I'm a great pool player, but today I'm worried about my physical condition. Am I in bad shape, Doc? Be frank, don't spare my feelings. Am I in bad shape? Well, this will be a pleasure. Yeah. Your overall condition is deplorable, McGee. Yeah. You have bags under your eyes that would hold a five-pound gift assortment of salted nuts. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in terrible shape. You also have a severe case of low stomach. Huh? The wonder you don't bump it with those knobby knees. <laughs> yeah, I better go right to bed. However, there's no reason why you shouldn't win that pool game tonight. Huh? Pool is played largely with the arm. Yeah? From your shoulder to your wrist, you're a fine physical specimen. But counting on you, my boy. Now, you see, dearie, I knew you'd be fit to play. Yeah, if you're willing to take the word of this wobble-potted witch doctor. <laughs> What's his opinion worth? Five dollars, as you'll learn when you receive my bill. Oh. <laughs> Nerve of him charging me five bucks for that. I'd deduct that from the last bill he sent me in April, if I hadn't thrown it away. Then you better go to the Elks Club and get some practice for the big game. Yeah. I'll walk over there with you. Okay, let's go. Fine bunch of brother elks forcing the poor, tired old man to crawl out of a sick bed and pay off their mortgage with the sweat of this pool cue. Well, we're almost there, lovers. Are you trying to get out of this match tonight? My gosh, of course not. I can hardly wait. Then a minute ago, why did you deliberately step on that banana peel? I just didn't see it. I ought to write a hot letter to the street department that's supposed to clean these streets we're walking on up. <laughs> and do they do it? No. They leave banana skins laying around so long they ain't even slippery anymore. <laughs> what this town needs Hello, is... Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, oh, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Say, pal, I heard about your pool match tonight. Congratulations. Thanks. Wish I could be there to watch you, pal, but I have to stay home and work on my scenario. Scenario? You writing a movie, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, didn't I tell you, Molly? Yes. It's a love story. Oh? It opens with this young couple at breakfast, you see, on their honeymoon. Oh. On the table before them are two cups of coffee and two pitchers of pet evaporated milk. Two pitchers? Everything is strictly 50-50 with these kids, Molly. <laughs> They're in love, you see. Well, he looks at her, he smiles, he speaks. Dearest, he says, you're the pet milk in my coffee. Oh, you're as sweet as the good country milk, which, concentrated to double richness by evaporation, pet is. I love you, I love you. Oh, brother. And then, listen to this. Lifting her eyes to his and gazing deep into his coffee cup, filled as it is with steaming java with the rich, creamy color, the full-bodied flavor that makes coffee with pet milk such a satisfying drink, she answers. And high time, too. <laughs> What'd she say? What'd she say? What'd well, she, say? she said... Bless you, my beloved. I love you, too. Not only because you're good and wholesome, like pet milk, which makes our coffee taste so delicious, but because you're double rich, too. Oh, the kid is loaded. <laughs> now, that's a real sweet thought. Well, I thought so, Molly. And then, look, she smiles shyly. A faraway look comes into her eyes, and suddenly he understands. Oh, he finally catches on. Yeah. And together, together they plan for the one thing they need to make the happiness in their little home complete. You mean? Yes. Plenty of pet milk on the pantry shelf for all of us. <laughs> wow, what a story. What a picture that'll make. I better get it down on paper before somebody steals it. So long, kids. <laughs>
steals it. I wish somebody would steal him. Well, now, you go on in and practice your pool, dearie. I'll do some shopping and be back in time to watch you win the match. Okay, kiddo. See you later. Good luck, dearie. Good luck, she says. That rat is why did they have to pick me? Just because a guy talks like a pool champion don't mean he can play pool like a pool champion. I don't see why they had... Well, hello, McGee. You've come to practice for the big match, champ? Hi, Ollie. Yeah, I thought I'd better train a little. Get in shape. Oh, you're in good shape for the shape you're in, Sam. <laughs> you used to man for the young. Yeah, well, that's what they all say. And they're right, of course. I'll mop up the floor with that guy like he had a handle on him. Sure you will. Or I would if I had my lucky cue. I just remembered my lucky cue's busted. I busted it yesterday. I can't play without my lucky cue. Don't you worry. I fixed it for you with tire tape, Sam. You like new. <sighs> that ratted I wish people would leave my things alone around here. My gosh, a guy can't even bust a pool cue without some guy fixing it up. Well, don't you want to play this match tonight, Sam? Well, sure, but it kind of burns me up, Ollie. When my brother Alex need me, it's please help us out, McGee. When they don't need me, it's McGee. Why don't you stop dropping ashes on the floor? McGee, why don't you pay your dues? McGee, why don't you... Hey, my dues. I ain't paid my dues. Is the trivia here? Sure, right over there in the corner. Hey, the trivia. Hey, I got bad news. I can't play tonight. Good heavens, why not? On account of I got ethics, boy. It ain't right for a man to represent the Elks if he ain't a member in good standing. And I ain't. I owe 15 bucks back dues and I haven't got the money. Oh, is that all? Well, don't give it another thought. I'll pay the money to the treasurer myself so you can play. <laughs> you will? Well, of course. We need you, McGee. Oh. I'll take care of it immediately. Oh, it's days like this which make an elk like me wish he was a moose. <laughs> King's Man and Little Teeny and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. This is the story of a reindeer, a super extraordinary reindeer. He wasn't what a reindeer ought to be, for he had one peculiarity. Go on, Teeny, you tell us. Oh, yeah. Well, I got no butterflies in my stomach, Doc. Oh? No, sir. 
But boy, there's a cubby of quail in there that I wish they'd like. <laughs> Well, you just relax, champ. We're depending on you. I'll go see if Latrivia is ready to start. Gee whiz, Molly. How did I ever... Uh-oh. Look. Look, Molly. That's the guy I'm supposed to beat. He's practicing over there. Oh, yeah. Elmo Jones. Come on. Let's watch him in a minute. I saw him a while ago. I don't think he's any great shape. Oh. Do you see that shot? That's what I mean. Huh? My goodness, he can't even keep the balls on the table. <laughs> Every time he hits one, they all roll into those little nets on the side there. <laughs> Look, Tootsie, I got news for you. You're supposed to knock... Oh, skip it. Let me sit down a minute. My old trouble is coming back on me. What old trouble? Homophobia. <laughs> Man, I wish I was home. <laughs> I don't feel good, Molly. Maybe I'm getting a chill. I got a kind of a cold, clammy feeling in my right foot. Take it out of the cuspidor. <laughs> he was. No wonder I... Well, looks like a fine turnout for the match, champ. And we're about ready to start it. How do you feel, champ? Stop calling me champ. I'm sure you'll make us all proud of you tonight, McGee. Ah, uh, okay, Latrivia, okay. I catch on. I'm stuck. I'll tell you one thing, though, boy. I'll try. I'll give it all I got. If I got any. <laughs> Good. Uh, are you ready, Mr. Jones? Any time, Mayor. Oh, all right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our championship pocket billiard match is about to begin. You get in there and give, dear. Yeah, I will. My legs are starting to give already. <laughs> Eddie, will you rack the balls, please? Oli, carry my pool cue, will you? I want to save my strength. Now, in this corner, representing the Elks Club of Slow Rapids, we have that expert with the cue, Mr. Elmo Joe. And for the wistful Mr. Elks Club, that popular local favorite, Mr. Fibber McGee. Hand me the chalk there, Jones. I'll take the chalk, Jones. <laughs> Certainly, Mr. McGee. Here you are. Holy. My cue. Here you are, Chump. I mean, Champ. <laughs> you ever win any of these contests, Jones? Oh, now and then. Mm -hmm. Won one last week. Oh, is that so? Who'd you play? Hoppy. Yeah? <laughs> I didn't know them cowboys played pool. <laughs> I thought it was... Oh, uh, pardon me, Mr. McGee, but you're chalking the wrong end of the cue. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I always do that, <laughs> for luck. Mm. Yeah. Well, don't let me make you nervous, Jones. Don't get nervous. I won't. Mm. Uh, you want to shoot first? Okay, I'll shoot first. I'll break. Now, now let me see. This, this is a tough shot, but mm, I'll play it from right here. You slipped. <laughs> Let's have another rack of balls, please. We'll never find all those. <laughs> Your shot, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mayor. I'll break in the uh, ten ball in the corner pocket. Now, quiet now, folks. My opponent is trying to shoot. Let's all be good sportsmen and don't make him nervous. Don't make him miss now because... Oh. One for Mr. Jones. Four ball in the corner pocket. Also six and twelve ball in the side. Oh, that's a very tough shot, folks. Nobody ever makes that one. But let's show some real sportsmanship now and give the man a chance. This shot is impossible, but if he wants to try it, let's keep quiet while he fouls it up. And then I'll show you... Three straight games to nothing, Molly. I never got a ball in. Oh, if that wasn't the awfulest exhibition that... Oh, now, you tried, dearie. You were just unlucky, that's all. No, oh, you're sweet, kiddo, but I wasn't unlucky. Let's face it, I always play pool like that. <laughs> 
nickel plated chunks. Well, here comes Latrivia and the guys now. I'm a disgrace, Molly. Oh, now you did the best you could. After all. All right, all right. I know what you guys are going to say, and you're right. My boy, you were magnificent. You were a real champ, chump. <laughs> You exceeded our fondest hopes, McGee. The Elks Club is proud of you. It is? I knew you wouldn't let us down, McGee. Yeah, but what... Through your playing, my boy, we were able to take the money we had in the treasury and make enough with it to pay the mortgage. <laughs> how, how could you make any money on me? I'm the worst fool player in the whole club. That's why we picked you. What do you mean? We bet our money on Mr. Jones. <laughs> Bibber and Molly return in a moment. You know, there are times when nothing seems to give you the same lift, the same deep-down satisfaction as a good cup of coffee. And one thing that makes a good cup of coffee taste extra good is pet evaporated milk. Just a little pet milk gives coffee a tempting, creamy color. Because that is uh, concentrated milk. Sweet country milk concentrated to double richness. And it's that double richness of pet milk that makes your coffee taste extra good, too. You see, when you use pet evaporated milk in place of cream, your coffee still has that full-bodied flavor, that characteristic coffee goodness that you enjoy so much. When you use pet milk instead of coffee cream, you get a lot more for your money, too. In fact, you get more than twice as much for your money because pet milk costs less than half of what you'd pay for regular coffee cream. So, for your own coffee drinking enjoyment, for extra goodness, extra savings, too, use Pet Evaporated Milk. Get several cans at your grocer's tomorrow. Well, it was quite a night, sweetheart. You glad to get home? No, I don't feel good, Molly. I got a big knot on my side. I felt something snap when I took that one shot. Let me help you off with your coat. Okay, easy now, kiddo. My side is all swole up. Big lump. <laughs> what was that? The eighth ball. Oh. <laughs> Out of your side pocket. <laughs> Swelling go down? Yeah, yeah. It's all gone. Good night. <laughs> Good night, all. <laughs> Evaporated milk, pet milk, brings you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Suppose you had a younger sister whose husband received his travel orders from Uncle Sam the week before Christmas. What would you do to help? Well, that's the question young wife Sally Carter tries to answer when her sister Peggy faces a situation all too familiar to many servicemen's wives in the story of the week on Pet Milk's Mary Lee Taylor program next Saturday morning. You'll also hear the recipe of the week for eggnog pie, a delicious whipped pet milk dessert that needs no baking and very little cooking. Tune in sure next Saturday morning to Pet Milk's big double feature Mary Lee Taylor program on this same NBC station. <laughs> It's Big Town, then Playhouse on Broadway on NBC.